Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers KO review. Today, thanks to the guys over at TF Direct, I'm taking a look at Tank Deformation by Kuban Bio, aka the Combiner Wars leader Megatron with the DX9 Megatron upgrade kit. So not only have they bootlegged Hasbro, they've also bootlegged the third party companies. But don't worry, piracy is morally okay because they've included alloy parts. Back of the box shows Megatron combined with the accessories, shows us that the chest and the crotch section are alloy parts, and they show him in his bot and his vehicle mode along with his bio. Here he is out of the box. Uh, first impressions, he looks and feels pretty much the same as the official Hasbro Combiner Wars Megatron albeit he's missing some vital Decepticon emblems. Of course, I don't want to infringe copyright too much. Um, he does come with some snazzy accessories. First of all, he comes with a limited collector's card here with the MP10V on there, and the Tank L, which is what we've got here. He comes with his Combiner Wars gun. He comes with a projectile missile. He comes with the DX9 attachment scope section. He comes with a silver version of the Armada Megatron head, which I am going to probably install on him and have him as Armada Galvatron. And he also comes with what is in essence his Combiner War hands, because he comes with different hands fitted as standard. Now starting with the kit first, first of all it's nowhere near as good as the DX9 kit was. It doesn't feel anywhere near as robust. Things don't quite tab in as firmly. Uh, it does feel cheaply made. It's still a solid plastic but the cuts don't really fit as well with the bootleg as the DX9 did. I mean, this doesn't quite tab in. This section here plugs into his arm absolutely fine. But if we uh, just pop that up, come around to the side here and try and plug that into the back of his arm, there is just way too much play in there and it just wobbles around all over the place. It won't fit into that screw hole. It does fit into this side slightly better, like so. Ah, but of course, that is the wrong side. The cannon, that seems pretty much okay. The tip is made of a very, very similar plastic to the DX9, although the paint application is a little bit lackluster on there. We get some pretty nice hands. We've got a trigger finger, and we've got this gripping motion here. That's pretty nice. Not really sure what the point in the hands are though, because they don't really grip the gun very well. It's really wibbly wobbly in there. Here he is alongside Hasbro Megatron with the X2 Toys upgrade kit on. As you can see, the paint applications are slightly different. We do have the red coloration around the midriff and chest section, and we do have the very high gloss black pantyhose for the KO Megatron. Uh, other than that, these colors are very, very similar in appearance. Uh, it's pretty well done. It's not spot on. The paint applications are a little bit sloppy on the bootleg. But that being said, I paid less for the bootleg than what I paid for the original Hasbro release of the Megatron, and this came with a, albeit kind of poor quality, upgrade kit from the KO'd DX9. I've just noticed this, although the faces look very, very similar, is it me, or does the actual Hasbro one have more of a pursed lips expression than that of the bootleg? Hmm, interesting. Trout pouts aside, let's take a look at the paint applications and the levels of articulation. The paint applications aren't amazing, but they're not terrible to say the least. At the end of the day, this is a bootleg and you 
don't really know what sort of quality you're going to get. You take a risk, and sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, it looks like this is pretty well done. It feels robust, and the paint does seem quite of thickly applied. The head can look up and around, and could look down to look down at his disciples. The arms can come out, and they still have this horrific uh, red joint on there. We can go up and over. Very, very loud ratchet joints there. We have a bend at the elbow. I've already covered the wrists. They do rotate, and we do have these pointing fingers now. Actually, I'm not completely opposed to that, although it is quite a stiff stiff finger there, but I suppose it's nice to have Megatron points. The waist section here is die cast. Uh, it doesn't move forwards, um, so you don't get any additional forwards motion on the legs there. I thought with replacing this section here, they may have included a fold through there, just put a pin through and have a fold, uh, but apparently not. The waist does rotate on a friction joint. The legs do come out to the sides. So we get a nice high kick there, and we get uh, okay-ish bend at the knee. Looking at the inside legs, it's a very, very high gloss red finish on the inside of the KO DX9 parts. And unfortunately, it doesn't really match the red on the rest of Megatron. It is actually a different shade of gloss by the looks of things. It's not much in it, but having it in hand, it does look a little bit more noticeable. Uh, if we just pull this section off, and just take a look here. You've got the working mechanisms here and you've got quite an untidy pin on the inside of the leg section there. It's quite rough around the edges. It's hard to see here, but this side's a little easier. The pin has been pushed through uh, probably a little bit too far there. So you can see the rough section there. Also sloppy paint applications. Uh, hiding those out of the way, we do have rotation forwards and backwards on the feet, and because of the X9 parts, we now have ankle pivoting as well. He does have amazing light piping. You know, he's not all bad. It's a pretty good figure if you want somebody out there to command your bootleg army. Now, swapping out Megatron's head to turn him into Armada Galvatron is pretty straightforward. I've rotated the head around here, and it's got a mushroom peg underneath there, which is going to apply pressure on the head and just slowly work it off and it just literally comes off to place it back on, do it exact reverse, slide the head on, apply pressure, and then rotate it round. And there is the mighty Galvatron. <laughs> It actually looks a little bit too small. I think his chest looks a little bit too puffy. I don't know. I think he wore the coloured helmet uh, version much better with the Armada Combiner War Megatron. But I don't know. It, it's passable, I think. It's definitely passable. There we go. That's better. Just swung the cannon round to the Ford there and just split open those back two sections. That's made the world a difference. And they do actually now look like two fairly different characters. Uh, almost looks like Megatron's the boss there, and he's now made this kind of Armada Galvatron in his own image to be his second in command. What did make me laugh, though, is... I don't know if you can just see it. It's not quite on camera. Megatron has the new cannon section from him. It actually fits him perfectly. So they've made the kit to fit the Hasbro version perfectly, but it doesn't actually fit their own mould. Well done. To transform him up into his tank mode, we need to strip all of those accessories off him, which is at that point we're reminded just how scrawny the legs on the Combiner Wars Megatron really are, and that he should not have skipped leg day. Right, to start off the transformation, you want to flip the toes forward, on the really nice clicky ratchets. You want to pull these sections forward over the hands, covering those up. And you want to lift up this chest section here and lift up the waist section as well. That now allows us to bring these two sections 
in to the center and the gun section is going to drop down in between and that's going to tab in either side of that gun. As you can see I've actually left the cannon section of the DX9 kit on there because there is no physical need to remove that for the transformation. Now I'll slide these shoulder sections forward, pull them apart and they're going to rock up here and they are going to tab into the front of the chest section, rock that up, slide that forward and tab that in, come around to the legs and apply pressure just on that joint, give it a little snap, pull that round Make sure the waist section is pressed in firmly and then we can tab the legs in to the waist. And there he is, all folded up and tabbed into place. Never a huge fan of his tank mode. Uh, it makes more sense for Megatron to be a tank than it does a gun, uh, mass shifting aside, etc. But, um, I don't know, it's something about it. and I. You can add the DX9 accessory kit on, uh, but I wasn't really a fan of how that looked on him in tank mode, same as I wasn't really a fan of how the X2 Toys kit looked on him in tank mode. I, I think they are designed for him in bot mode, he should stay on him in bot mode, maybe he should just stay in bot mode himself. You can still extend the turrets. One thing they have actually added to this mold though that we didn't have with the original, is a tilt on the turret. That's a new thing. So we can now rotate and we can now move up and down as well. That's actually quite a nice addition. So, final thoughts. Uh, yes, it's nice to have a tilt on the turret and it's nice to have all these accessories come with it nice to get the die cast parts and the paint applications aren't terrible if you already have the combiner wars megatron mold is there any point in getting this no not at all for the sheer fact that you can go out and buy the x2 toys add-on kits or the dx9 add-on kit for far less than what you would pay for this now on the other hand if you don't own the megatron mold then I can highly recommend this. This is a cheaper alternative to getting that mold and you already get an upgrade kit with it. So it's quite a viable option. Me, myself, I'm gonna have him as the Armada Galvatron standing next to the towering X2 Megatron helping command the KO troops. Yes, that's right, I make up storylines for my toys. <laughs> anyway, I hope this video has been useful and helpful for you. Thanks again to the guys over at TF Direct. I do have more products coming. I have the oversized KO version of Feral Rex en route. Not a huge fan of doing the KOs of the third party figures because Hasbro can fight their own battles. Third parties are small guys and they need as much help as they can get. Uh, but I said I would take a look at the KO Oversized Feral because I know a lot of you want to know just how good he is. I've heard mixed reviews. I uh, heard that he's better quality than what we got with the KO TFC Uranus, which is good because that was okay. Uh, but the levels of detailing aren't anywhere near on par with what we got with the official Feral Cons. So we'll take it when it arrives. And until next time, thanks for watching. For myself... And KO Megatron, goodbye.